Got to get you to bow your heads for just a few minutes. Straightway in the morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered and said unto him, Thou sayest it. And the chief priest accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answerest thou nothing? Behold, how many things they witness against thee? But Jesus yet answered nothing, saying, So that Pilate marveled. Now at that feast, he released unto them one prisoner, whomsoever they desired. And there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them that had made insurrection with him who had committed murder in the insurrection. And the multitude crying aloud began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them. But Pilate answered them, saying, We ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews. For he knew that the chief priest had delivered him for envy. But the chief priest moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will you then that I shall do unto him, whom you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. And then Pilate said unto them, Why? What evil hath he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucify him. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them, and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. Acts chapter 29 will be written today. What would it read? Dr. Crystal wrote, In a dream, I saw a Savior. His back was bare, and there was a soldier lifting up his hand and bringing it down. That awful cat and nine tails. He said, in a dream, I rose and grasped his arm to hold it back. And when I did, the soldier turned in astonishment and looked at me. And when I looked at him, I recognized myself. As I was praying about this morning what I should deliver, the three things come to me, the three R's of 2020. Remembrance, repentance, and revival. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your many blessings. We thank you for your word. 
Father, I thank you for your Holy Spirit that we lives and dwells in each one of us, that teaches us, that guides us in all truth. And Father, you, as was mentioned earlier, where two and three are gathered together in your name, there I will be in the midst of you. And Father, I believe with all my heart I'm supposed to be here this morning. But I also believe those that are here are supposed to be here also to hear what's to be said. I ask you to give us the ears to hear and eyes to see the things you have us to hear this morning. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Hebrews 13 8 says Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. In Numbers 23, 19, my Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and how shall he not make it good? Make it good? After John was put into prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, and he was saying, did you catch that? He's saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. I believe in my own self. There's a word that needs to be reckoned with in the body of Christ today. The word's repentance. A lot of people don't want to hear about repentance because we all think we're so good and we're all doing the right things. We go to church, we sing a few hymns, Put some a little bit of money in the offering plate when they pass it by. So I'm okay. So this can't mean me. Repent means to turn away from our ways that are not pleasing to God. Amen. And then we start to analyze in our mind what it is that I'm not pleased with God. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All. Everybody. No one excluded. You see, sin will steal your joy. Sin will steal our faith. Sin thrills and then kills. Every departure from God's Word is sin. Whether it be a great or small, known or unknown, Intended or accidental. Sin thrills and then kills. John 10.10 10 says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life. And that they might have, they might have it more abundantly. They might. The choice. Believe the gospel. It's not just another book. It's God-inspired. 
the same yesterday, today, and forever. Man calls sin an accident. God calls an abomination. Man calls sin a defect. But God calls it a disease. Man calls sin fascination. God calls it fatality. Man calls sin weakness. God calls it goodness. Choice. Choice. The Bible says, choose you this day whom you will serve. More so than ever. The word remnant was spoken about in the foyer a while ago. I believe there will come a time with a little bit of remnant. Trying times. Time for faith people, faith believing people to rise up and claim their faith. Amen. Believe the gospel. Every Saturday morning, the Gideons and I meet and pray. We pray about different things. We pray about people, we pray for people. We pray for churches. We pray for pastors. We pray for our cities, our elected officials, our president. Over the last several months, one of the scriptures that would come up several times as I was thinking back, it came up at several different places in the body. And it goes like this. And you probably have heard it. This is if. A little small word, if. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will hear fill their land. Have you heard that before? A scorpion asked a beaver, to take him across the river on his back. And then the beaver said, Are you insane? While I'm swimming, you'll sting me and then I'll drown. Oh, come on now, laughed the scorpion. Why would I sting you? Then I would drown too. Come on, be logical. Think about it a little bit. Well, the beaver said, that makes sense to me. Hop on and take off. We'll go on to the other side. The scorpion climbed on the beaver's back. But about halfway across the river, he gave the poor trust of the beaver a mighty sting. And as they sank to the bottom, the beaver asked, Why did you do such a wicked thing? You said yourself, there would be no logic in your stinging me. Why then did you do it? And the scorpion said, Logic has nothing to do with it. It's just my nature. You see, Satan's nature is to steal, to kill, and destroy. There's no logic in it. He hates humanity. He hates Jesus Christ. And when we give ear to the devil and do the things that's not pleasing to God, drive another state. Do you remember 
the story of Jesus as he was being tempted by the devil. He said, it's written. It is written. It is written. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Temptations come to everyone. Choices have to be made today and tomorrow. Choices will have to be made. See, Timothy tells us that all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God. It's not just another book. The cross wasn't for naught. It was for you and I that we may live and live more abundantly. God also tells us in the book of Hebrews to lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, not to government, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God. This is another scripture I just love to hear every time I read it. He said, in my Father's house, by many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. So do you believe he's lying or not? Do you believe God's telling the truth or not? Do you believe the word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, or do you not? I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. He will come back. Are you ready to go? Don't pack your bags. You're not going to need them. Remember His Word. Repent of your sins. And revival will come. You want to see this church full? What motivation do you have to see it full? Is your motivation to see lives changed? Is your motivation to see people come to know the power of Jesus Christ? Or are your motivations anything different from that? If so, the pews will get into your new too. As I studied again, the Lord reminded me of the scripture of what to expect in the last days. He said, men shall be lovers of their own selves. They will be covetous, desiring something that belongs to someone else. He said, no covetous man who is an adulterer has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. They will be boasters, proud, blasphemous, Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, with 
without natural affection could care a rip, give a rip about anybody but himself. Truce breakers, false accusers, un incontent or uncontrollable, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. If it feels good, just do it. Forget about God's Word. Having a form of godliness, but not denying the power thereof. From such turn away. A believer, a church, having a form of godliness, but not denying the miraculous power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Believe the gospel. Oh, but Don, that was yesterday. That's not for today and tomorrow. Who's telling you that? Where's that lie coming from? Faith comes, our faith grows by hearing and hearing the Word of God. I'm not one of those guys that's like to be long winded. I study and study for a message and then let it lay and give you something to think about as I think about it while I'm studying. You see, I believe the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of me because I'm a born again believer. Jesus Christ and I wouldn't say if he would come today, I'm going. No doubt in my mind. But the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of me, he helps lead me, guide me in all truth. As I listen to the Holy Spirit on the inside of me, I write it down. Just as He does with you. And now you have to judge whether or not I'm saying what I'm saying is from the Holy Spirit. If you have conviction in your heart about some things that I've said this morning, you might want to take heed and listen. I'm not begrudging you. I'm the same boat to you now. I'm not down you. I'm, I'm, I'm here with you. I'm right here with you. Because all that sin that comes short of the glory of God. Revival is the last part that I would like to talk about. You know what revival means? It means a renewal. Or an increase of interest in Christianity. Revival. He's not your friend. 
He's here to kill, to steal, and destroy. When all lukewarm get fired up. You remember what they said over in Revelation about lukewarm churches? They said something about spewing your mouth his mouth. All dishonest people will confess it. All disgruntled people will sweeten up. All discouraged people will start looking up for whence our hope comes from. All those who separate themselves from others will make it. I ain't going to church because so and so over there, I seen what he was doing the other day, and he made me mad. I'm not going back to that church. See, people, all that stuff got to fall off. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sins. Sometimes we have to die in order to gain. We have to tell ourselves, I'm not going to be there anymore. I'm going to not do that anymore. I choose, I choose to serve the Lord. All gossipers will shut up. All the dry bones will shake up. All the true soldiers will stand up. And all the church members are prayed up. If we will find ourselves quiet place. Draw a circle on the floor and kneel down and get in it and pray. If my people who are called on my name will humble themselves and pray. Little prayer, little power. Little prayer, little power. And if we can only just get serious enough to pray this prayer. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. The psalmist read, pray over 141. It goes like this. Lord, I cry unto thee. Make haste unto me. Give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as an incense. before the ascension and the lifting of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth and keep the door of my lips. Incline not my heart to any evil thing to practice wicked works with men that work iniquity. And let me not eat of their dainties. Let the righteous smite me, it shall be a kindness, and let him reprove me, it shall be an excellent oil. 
but shall not break my head. For yet my prayers all shall, shall be in their calamities. When their judges are overthrown in stony places, they shall hear my words, for they are sweet. Our bones are scattered to the gray's mouth. That's when one cut it and cleat it wood upon the earth. But my eyes are unto thee, O God, the Lord, and there and thee is my trust. Leave not my soul destitute. Keep me from the snares which they have laid for me for the gins of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nets, whilst so that I will escape. See, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? And then God said this. This shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inner parts, and write it in their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, saith the Lord. I will forgive their iniquities and I will remember their sins no more. This is the day the Lord hath made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. He said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. That's right. Heavenly Father, we come before you once again. We thank you for this time that we spend with you. But I pray, Father God, this night, just this time. I pray, Father God, that the uh, words that were spoken today that we will take to heart. And they will come to know you better. And they will learn to serve you better. And we will learn that, uh, we will pray that your word is the final authority. That it's not of you we want it. Thank you for these people. I ask you to bless them in a special way. Guide us by your spirit in all we do. We'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, the good. Because of our life.